Some cool kind of just picked up here. We're doing an evaluation. Chemistry is way off. Zero chlorine in the swimming pool. 8.2 acid. We got a 50 on the alkalinity and 50 on the calcium and it's zero on the cyanuric acid. We got some uh, spitters over there. There was about four feet higher than this canopy here. Roll, uh, up in the air, splashing all over the deck. Take you over to the equipment pad. We got a Masflow XL2, only running from the, the skimmer line is right here open. Cleaner is closed. Main drain has been eliminated. We got a 150 square foot here with swim clear with a pool return and uh, this pipe right here is the fountains. Oh. And the checking uh, once you actually do the cleaning on the pool you want to be checking the surfaces and as you come around you want to notate any stains right there that spot that's a stain we have a few stains along this edge of the swimming pool here And we're gonna finish up this uh, conversation when we get back to the vehicle. All right, so we're back in the vehicle and I wanted to give you a little bit of uh, some things that I look for when I'm in the backyard of a potential customer's house and uh, looking at the swimming pool to give it a bid for pool services or even if it's uh, for pool repairs, whatever the case is. Uh, is. For pool services, we're gonna predominantly focus on uh, that aspect because it's a uh, widely asked of and uh, what to look for uh, when bidding on a swimming pool and things that you should look for to help either A, protect yourself uh, for, for further issues that may arise later on if you do get awarded the, the, the contract for the pool services and uh, number two, uh, so that you can come accustomed with uh, that particular swimming pool uh, operations and the way the pool functions. Every single pool functions uh, differently, as you can tell with this one that we just last left. Um, this swimming pool, uh, from what I understand from the, what the client uh, gave us information on, was uh, renovated uh, about two years ago. Um, and the main drain of the swimming pool is not functional they got it uh, eliminated and capped off so the only suctions that this swimming pool has is the vacuum line and the skimmer so as looking uh when first approaching the swimming pool um i always look at a the size of the swimming pool and where it's placed within the yard uh, and how many gallons does it have and how many different features does a swimming pool have uh, as far as structural is concerned? Does it have a bench, benches? Does it have long, uh, long um, 
downstairs? Does it have a spa? Does it not have a spa? Does it have uh, water features like this one does? Does it have a raised wall? Uh, access to the swimming pool, access around the swimming pool. Um, and then I look at how much uh, trees and landscape is surrounding the swimming pool because uh, that's all going to determine how much labor is going to be on a weekly basis uh, for the life term of the contract of the services. So those are the things that I look at. Obviously with this swimming pool, there was a lot of uh, oak trees lined in the back of it. There's some palm trees of uh, uh, the species, some species of palm trees that surrounding the pool as well. Um, it's in the shaded area of, 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 the, of the, the yard. So it's predominantly gonna be a, a, a colder pool. Um, there's a heater on the pool and there is a water feature deck jets on this swimming pool. As we first saw, the deck jets were uh, programmed or uh, adjusted to where it's spinning four or five feet up in the air, higher than the uh, the pergola that's uh, off to the off to the side. So running deck jets every single day with the landscape that's surrounding it, even though the pool is probably about a between the 10 to 12,000 gallon swimming pool, uh, just the sheer nature of those deck jets, that pool is going to have a uh, higher pH uh, constantly raising up uh, from a week to week basis because aeration of the water um, so we'll be trying to educate the client and the uh, in the time to come regarding possibly using this as only as a water feature and if, when guests come over as family functions whatever the case is and then on a normal weekly daily routine you know keep that off um, because that's going to help better us maintain that swimming pool with the pH uh, levels on it. So um, that's number one that we just uh, went over. Number two, let's go to the equipment. Now with the equipment here, standard um, pump. I believe it was a one horsepower pump with a Hayward Swim Clear C150 on it, which is good. I would, you know, that's if I was putting in that Hayward system, um, I would have definitely went with the filter, uh, depending on the, the customer's budget and the pool requirements, that pump, maybe, maybe not, but that's not here nor there, that's what's on the pool, and it's uh, rightfully compatible with what the pool has uh, to offer and the size and the gallon inches and things of that nature. So uh, one thing that you know I didn't like was the fact that the pool does not have a pool main drain. Um, you know, that probably in the future, and maybe that's something that he may or may not want to uh, take a look at, and we'll you know see about you know talk with him in the future regarding a possible repair, figuring out what the actual problem is. Um, he may or may elect to to do that or not. Um, but as we go forward with the maintenances and seeing how the pool is operating and how we need to specifically gear a service for this specific swimming pool uh, is to be determined. I maintain swimming pools that have had main drains that are not, uh, that, that are eliminated. And, you know, just as long as we have a vacuum cleaner in the pool like this one had and a skimmer that's, that's fully operational like this one was, you know, pool could probably potentially, you know, operate, you know, fairly, fairly well uh, with those two there. Um, so that's to be determined in the future. The timer, always check the timer, make sure that the timer is operational. We check the valves, make sure the valves open and close properly. Um, the filtration system, uh, unless if it's a in dire need of of, uh, of a cleaning, you know, we look at the pressure, the you look at the filter pressure gauge if it's within the green like this one was, or if it's within, you know, between that 10 to 15 psi, depending on the pool and uh, the dynamics of the swimming pool and the plumbing and things of that nature. If it's within that range, then you're probably, you know, pretty good on a first service. Uh, like I said, it. It's not, as long as it's not in a dire need of getting it done, you know, you know, and they can hold off to our uh, scheduled program of when we're doing the maintenance for cleaning of the swimming, uh, swimming pool filters, you know, we can do that. We'll let that roll like that. Uh, number three, right before we head into, uh, you know, doing the cleaning, 
you know, we check the chemistry of the swimming pool and we see where the current state of the chemistry of the swimming pool is in. Uh, we, uh, our company, if the chemistry is not in line, you uh, need to uh, let the client know of what that, uh, those states and the values of those chemistries are, and then go ahead and uh, let them know that uh, we do charge an initial rebalancing uh, and chemical addition of the swimming pool to bring it back and back in line so that uh, the pool can get back to balance. Uh, as we always say, a blue pool is not a healthy or safe swimming pool. Uh, given what the values that we have here, zero on the chlorine, 8.2 on the acid, uh, 50 on the alkalinity, 50 on the calcium, and a zero on the stabilizer, that pool is way out of whack on the balance. So, um, you know, you explain that to the client, you do your calculations on the pool gallonages versus how much uh, pounds of the chemical or ounces of the chemical, whichever one that you're specifically dealing with is needed. And then, you know, you uh, send an estimate for the client for that. Um, so that's that part. So the, in our case, our client has already given us their authorization to, to do that. And, you know, he's on board with the, uh, with rebalancing his swimming pool because he wants to get it right. So thirdly, you know, you go ahead and if, if, if you get awarded the bid and you can start on the contract, you know, have, have yourself, you know, uh, some type of service agreement and, uh, and a credit card authorization form with you. Uh, that's the way we do business. We sign every client up with a, a credit card authorization uh, and we have them fill out the form and then we get that from them so that we can secure the money. Um, and it's just like any other services nowadays, if you go to the gym, uh, they get automatically billed on the credit card every single month. So that way, uh, you know, you know that your clients are paying you on time and you set the, you set the date of when you're going to be getting paid. And then uh, you could just freely and easily, you know, do your job and make sure that you, you, you're you getting paid. So that's one less thing to worry about. Uh, and that's been instrumental in my business for me to grow and be able to do my job and I have to deal with so much of the back and forth with the client waiting for a check or waiting for them to pay it online or whatever the case is or you know leaving the money at the house uh, this really eliminates about 70 to 90 percent of all that uh, back and forth hassle between uh, client and company so you know get that in line if you don't have that i highly recommend for you to go ahead and do that sign yourself up with some type of merchant services uh, whether it be with uh, if you have your accounting software with quickbooks sign up with their merchant services it's a great program or if you're doing it the old school way if you want to do other ones like uh, stripe i believe it's called or you know all these other merchant services highly recommend for you to get that uh, number two, uh, when you do get that, try to get yourself a mobile card reader because you can get paid on the spot for services that you perform. Uh, if, so like let's say you're doing jobs and a neighbor calls you and say, hey, come and do this job. Uh, you tell them the price, they agree with it, uh, take their card and mobile card reader, boom, you get paid automatically. So that's another good tip. Uh, you know, get yourself a, with a merchant services and a, uh, a mobile card reader. So. Uh, going back to the swimming pool once we you know you clean it up and then I turn off the whole entire pool And then now I'm actually starting to, with a clean pool I'm actually going to start to check the actual material Sometimes you know some certain things will be apparent right in your face if it's a, your uh, older swimming pool that you're dealing with or an older surfacing job that you're dealing with it's it's apparent that you're gonna see these things uh, you know mark it down make sure that you are uh, putting designated uh, spots, you know, I've done it before where I'll draw up a pool or I just have like a basic sketch out of a pool and on uh, on a paperwork that I have, I mark that and, and, and let the client know, look, I'm seeing that you have a, pre a previous stain here, 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 here on your swimming pool and that, uh, you know, so that they know and you're acknowledging, you're making them acknowledge that those were stains prior to you. And what that's gonna do is, is eliminate that from coming back in the future saying, but that was never there. There's a newly resurfaced pool. I never saw that before. You have it jotted down, you've notified the client and you have it on your paperwork. Uh, if you have something like that, where you pinpointed the stains uh, that you noticed on the day of 
uh, you come in to do the evaluation of the swimming pool, where those stains are located, and uh, you know you can go as far as the size that they are, the type that they are, whatever the case is. I have done this, and I do this on every single one of my swimming pools. And let me tell you, that right there, by having that, it has come back. Clients come back. This stain was never here before. I say, no problem, let me go to the office because we have it. Sometimes take pictures. If there's something that's big, pictures, videos, like I'm doing today, pictures and videos, uh, and store that somewhere in, in, in a storable uh, external uh, hard drive somewhere else and keep that on your records or paper, pictures, videos, and paperwork. Always have those three key elements to help protect yourself with a, fur, uh, a future problem or issue with your client. You put them on notice that you noticed it and you have it jotted down that you know those things were there. Now anything, if anything, if anything ever comes out after that, then you know that's another uh, topic to discuss with your client, between you and your client at a time. But definitely take notice of the swimming pool, take notice of the deck, take notice of the equipment, the age of the equipment, you know, write down what the pump is, what the horsepower the motor is, what the filter size is, uh, what type of timer or automation system they currently have, if they have a heater, if they don't have a heater, pool in the spa, all these different factors are, it's just information is going to help you to help, number one, determine a price, number two, is going to assist you with uh, future problems cause it cause you hey listen I have this problem and you don't remember what it is because you may have other service techs that are doing your job you could look up in your notes and say okay you have this to set an estimate you know that they have this filter this motor this this and this you can easily do your research and that's also going to save you in the future from saving going to the house making a special trip just to see it was a one horsepower motor or I have a 150 square foot filter, or I have a 100 square foot filter of this man manufacturer, this brand. So, um, you know, the more information that you can gather at the estimate, and this takes minutes, minutes to do. Once you get accustomed with the equipment and with the pools, this takes minutes to do. It's just how diligent and how uh, organized are you gonna be with your business is the number one thing that I would say has helped me to uh, either A, look more professional in the customer's eyes, and B, prevent any future uh, uh, issues or um, problematic uh, problems with you know, certain situations, or to it, it, it also helps me in the future of uh, you know, solving an issue very quickly and, uh, and, and, and helping the client out. So uh, that is probably one of the biggest keys that I have had with uh, within my business is that. So, um, so to wrap it up really quickly, you know, go out to the swimming pool and, you know, know which side of the house the equipment is on, which side of the house uh, you're gonna enter from each week. That's, you know, number one, as you're approaching the pool, survey everything, pool size, uh, what's inside the pool, what, what the features does the pool have, uh, access to the pool, access around the swimming pool, how much clearance do you have, um, how much actual brushing surfaces is there, do they have large swim outs, do they have long benches, do they have uh, um, uh, a beach long entry that's uh, from deck to pool like that, swooped in, uh, where it's basically like a walk-in type of thing, there's no steps. Um, you know, I have some of those on my route. And, um, you know, do they have palm trees and stuff like that around the swimming pool? Take a look at the landscape around the pool. Is it gonna take you a longer time to clean that pool because of all the landscape that's around it? Uh, and even actually look inside the trees. Do you currently see that, you know, the trees that are close to the pool or the palm trees that are close to the pool? Does it have berries? Does it have seeds? Is that, look at the deck. As soon as you're walking up, you see the pool is full of leaves. Look at the deck. How is that gonna be every single week? That's gonna be like that, especially right now in the winter time when everything is falling off the trees and in the, in, in, in the, uh, the springtime when everything is budding up, how is that deck gonna be? Well, there's wind. Wind is gonna blow everything into the pool. Taking a look at all these different facets. Then, once you do all that, you go back to the equipment, check out the equipment, take notice of everything, open, you know, open the valve, make sure that that opens, make sure the timer's working right, jot down all the all the specifications of the equipment that they have there. This pump, this 
size horsepower motor? Is it a round flange? Is it a square flange? Um, size of the filter, size of the plumbing, that's very big too. Size of the plumbing, is it a one and a half inch coming in, two inch going out, two inch coming in, two inch going out to one and a half inch? You know, the type of valves that they've had. I've done all these things because it has saved me so much time uh, to know uh, sending estimates or helping the client out when, you know, we are not there and they, they're able to solve it. Um, then checking the chemistry of the swimming pool, letting them know, look, this is your current chemistry. This is where it needs to be at. This is how much it's going to cost you to, to, to raise it up because you're, you're taking over a swimming pool that's not balanced. And that sh is not covered in the, uh, or should not be covered in your first month's, uh, your first month's uh, service rate and, and, and work that you're going to be doing. And letting them know. Then, once you finish and they agree to everything and you clean the extra swimming pool, you know, take pictures of everything. Uh, start taking notice of, you know, does this pool have any stains in it? Does the pool have any, any specific things around it? The coping as you're walking around it or the decking, is it loose? All those different things, take a look at. You know, these are all things that's either gonna save you uh, or, or potentially not cause you to have any issues in the future. Um, what else? Yeah, you know, write everything down. You know, and then if you get if you get really good with the paperwork, you know, once you're finished done it and, and they're signing your service agreement, try to come up with a service agreement, uh, and then have them sign it. And then on that service agreement, on the back of it or whatever, have them sign your your credit card authorization form. Have them fill that out. You know, put them on automatic. Get yourself a merchant services. Get a good uh, accounting software. I, I use QuickBooks. QuickBooks is awesome. You know, I I, I like it a lot. Um, you know, it, it automatically charges a credit card on, on file. That's going to save you a lot of headaches in the future. Um, yeah, so these are the things that I look for when approaching and earning the business and bidding on a new pool service account or whether I'm uh, going to do a, a pool service, uh, I mean, a pool repair bid on uh, some type of work that's happening. These are all the different facets that I look at. Uh, hopefully this has uh, opened your eyes a little bit to certain things that you should be looking for uh, as you're grooming yourself uh, to uh, becoming a pool professional. And if you have any questions or anything that you may need a little bit of clarification on or something that I missed, uh, you know, this is I shoot it all off of the hip whenever I'm approached with a, a, a new uh, something new. You know, I'm a real guy, I do real work, and uh, post your comments down below, hit the like button, push the bell notification, subscribe to the channel, and uh, I'm out, peace.